Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we've got our special get guest, Matt Ricketts from Better Life Maids joining us. Hi, Matt. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for having me again. Uh, this is awesome. We've uh, had a, a long list of uh, topics that we wanted to cover yesterday with Matt and didn't really get to any of them. So <laughs> Matt agreed to uh, come back and join us again today because we have some stuff that uh, we think is really important and useful uh, as, as you consider smart business moves uh, during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, we're going to be talking about marketing today and, and, and some of the things that uh, Matt's been working on, ideas to help develop your brand and, and create more value out of your brand and to, to leverage that to gain market share, which is kind of a fancy way of saying getting more customers and generating more revenue and putting more money in the bank, something that uh, is near and dear to all of our hearts and is important and now more so than ever. Um, before we jump into that, is there anything happening in the, uh, in the world in the last 24 hours as it pertains to I don't know, small business administration or any of the, 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 the COVID related stuff out there that we, we haven't talked about? Uh, I think everyone should probably read the new SBA guidance that came out today. I haven't read it yet, so I don't really want to dive into that as a topic today. But they did put out new guidance under Rule 46, I believe is what it's called, um, on the, uh, the, the protection plan uh, forgiveness. And um, there's... There's a lot to it. So I'm going to probably dive into that tonight for some bedtime reading, and then we can probably expand on that and help people understand a little bit more in the future. Or um, there's a lot of people, you know, that to follow on that right now too, that could help with that too. Wait, was this the information that was promised several weeks ago? I don't know. It was a, and it's, it's in Q and a format too, which is kind of funny. So it's not even like the, the rule is actually out there somewhere and it's probably really complicated to read and even worse than this. The Q&A is huge from what I look. I just opened it up and it was like, it was a pretty big document and, um, and it was all in question and answer format. So I'm guessing that they must they must be responding to the fact that there's a lot of questions still. Um, so it, it, was, it was a strange format for a, uh, for a rule to come out in, but I, maybe it's not the final rule. Maybe it's just their um, guidance. It was, but it was helpful. I, I read like a couple paragraphs of it and I was like, all right, I've got, a lot to do today. So this is, this is SBA website. I believe so. so well, now you now you got me all excited, Matt. I can't wait to get in there and read that. I'm like, ah, you guys can get stay on the call. I'm gonna go read. Yeah. Ooh. Where where, where where would it be here, Matt? I don't know. I don't know. I I, yeah. I found it because Megan likes shared the link, so I found it on Facebook through Megan likes. So. Do you have a, Can you send me the link in an email? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, I can do that today. But yeah, so that was that was sort of something that I saw come out today, and I dug into a little bit. But I don't have enough to to speak on that with any clarity today. Okay. Well, that's our that's our tease for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, y'all. Got the regulars in early today. All right. Or so, on time. Yeah. So we want to jump into to branding and you know jump. Yeah. Uh, what you, yeah, let's do that. Uh, what, what you've been working on, Matt? So um, I'll probably share my screen in a second, but I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of what we decided to do with some of our time. Um, um, and, and honestly, I think I'm going to make this like a permanent, as long as I have the money for it when this is all said and done. Um, I, I hired a, a web designer and a, a graphic designer into my company. And um you know, both of them at about 10 to 15 hours a week. And um, I'd like to be able to imagine that I'm going to be profitable enough to keep them throughout the year, but I have a lot of projects that I want to get done. And with this downtime, it seemed like a good time to do it. Um, so, you know, I have them working on some things. So we decided to do a rebrand of our company and a rebrand is not just a new logo, although that is part of it. Um, it's not just a new website. It's for us, it's a comprehensive, like, evaluation of the image that we're presenting to our customers. So um, what I really wanted to focus on in a new design was, are we making the customer the center of the story of our website and of our communication? Are we making them the hero of the story? And we're still, so when I show you the examples, the copy's not there yet, but that's the idea. Um, are, are, are we solving problems for them? 
And are we like a trusted guide? And the word trust, again, being such an important word in this um, in this environment. So I wanted to create, you know, again, a brand that uh, was modern and, you know, exuded trust. So working on that, also working on some Facebook marketing and then trying out some new things like um, uh, Nextdoor. Some of you guys might already be using Nextdoor for yourselves. Nextdoor used to have uh, some pretty big restrictions on who could advertise with it, how much spend you would have to do and things like that. Um, they just lowered those uh, probably in the last few months. I hadn't been paying attention. Um, if, if you've been using this for a while, that's great. I knew last year this was this was not an option. This was only for big companies. But you can target people in next door. And those are pretty active communities. Um, and if your business is you know getting a lot of recommendations in there, that's a very good place to be focusing some energy. And I know a lot of you guys are in there when people are requesting cleaners and things like that. But you can now put a special in there. Uh, so we're doing a 10% coupon. I can show that today as well. Um, you know, not 10% is not a great, not a great special. It's not going to probably knock the doors down. But the fact that we already have 25 or 26 other little hearts on our profile in the in the next door uh, lends to some credibility. And hopefully, um, again, that word trust that they'll you know give us a call and at least give us an opportunity to uh, to win that trust. So uh, yeah. Uh, I can share the screen and kind of start with some of this and we can dig in where people have questions. So um, I'm going to have to share. I only have one monitor today. So uh, I'm going to do my entire screen. It's going to be us in limbo for a second until I jump over to Envision here. Tom, whenever you're ready, I think I'm. Uh, okay, man, you're, you're up. I'm going to go ahead and go full screen here. So, okay. So you can, you can eat now, Liz. I'm going to show you our current website, and I'm going to just kind of jump back um, to that to start with. So, um, our current website is is a little darker. Branding is branding is always been very colorful with us, but we tried this darker overlay over pictures, so we could use like full size pictures and things like that. But but it really never we never really loved the the look and feel of the darker website, and it just Kind of, you know, the other thing is you see this scrolling form. It just takes up a lot of space and it, it converts well. It gets people to fill out the form. So that's the point. Um, but there's other ways to accomplish that. And then the other thing is so um, our branding has always been about being consistently delightful. Um, while delightful is a great word, I don't know that it's the word that I want to focus on. Uh, moving forward, right? So not that there's, again, anything wrong with that as a brand idea. It's just, I want them to focus on trust a little bit more. So um, we're using a few things. So if you want to start with, this is our logo now. I think it's still a serviceable logo, but we wanted something a little bit more modern and clean. And so I'm going to open up, um, I'm going to open up a app, let's see, Finder, Downloads, and... Let me know if you can see these logos when they pop up. Do you guys see this, Tom? Yes. Okay. So we wanted to create a flexible logo that could be used both horizontally and vertically. And the reason we wanted to do this is that it just it's just more flexible. I don't, I don't want to dig too deep into it, but, our old, but we wanted a logo that was modern, clean, and we, we wanted to have just a very quick nod to the fact that we were, you know, um, made. We wanted to get an icon in there, so we snuck this bottle into the logo and that's the shape of the better life product bottles which is kind of a unique shape um so the logo is flexible it can be used in a lot of different ways you know horizontal horizontally and vertically but also with colors with with other you know with other combinations and just um how it looks on on imagery and things like that you can kind of see so that was kind of the first step we took some time and really rethought the logo and made it look a little bit more clean and modern so and then we, you know, by no stretch of the imagination are we done with with this website. This is a mock-up tool called Envision. Um, if you are going to work with somebody that's going to design your website for you, um, there's a couple of tools that I really like, and Envision is one of them. It is, and there's other mock-up tools that are great, but this this is where your designer can put the design ideas and put them all in one place where you guys can collaborate and try some different ideas. So. What's cool here is um, this is just like one version of a site. This is not even the site. It's just we're looking at what the what the kind of we're looking at the conversion strategy here. So um, 
you know, you can comment on this too and be in comment mode and add comments to here. So you can see that I've put a bunch of comments on this already. Um, you know, things that I'm not thrilled with. But one thing I want to show you here is obviously here's the new execution of the logo. Um, your life met your life made better with service you can trust. However, what's cool is as they you know stay on the screen, this is going to change from service to people to products, and this will be clickable to any of those things. So we really want to be we really want to focus on our service, people, products. But this word trust is going to be is going to be very big, and then um, you know really focusing on cleaning for safe for safety and health, and that's a big thing that um, I haven't stolen from Tom, but it's you know something that he's focused on for a long for a long time. I think there's a way to um, to do that in a fresh, modern way. It's called best practices. Yeah, yeah. best practices. In college, and, we call it plagiarism, but in business, yeah. they call it practice. So then, then just some like really fun graphical style. So uh, I really like mid-century design. So I really wanted to kind of incorporate some of that. So these shapes and designs are all kind of like from that. And a few strategies. I don't want to dig too deep into this, but what my point is, it's a great time to, to be thinking through um, what you want to do with your website, what you want to do, what you want to do with your, um, what you want to do with your, uh, all of your branding at this time to really um, stand out in a crowded market. So again, so we, we're trying a few different things. We're actually going to probably create a couple different home pages and test them out. So this is another version. Um, where we're going to still have a form, but it'll just be here at the top here. Uh, this gets your instant price, and this will tie right into Made Central. Um, and, and it'll also take them to the booking page once they request the estimate. Um, and so, you know, focusing on a video with this version and then some other videos below here. But again, really, I wanted to focus on a lot of white space um, with the idea being, you know, bright, clean, um, fresh perspective. Uh, lots of trust elements with reviews, a letter from Angela. And um, again, this is still a work in progress and you can kind of see some ideas that we're, we're working through. Um, so tying that into tying that into some advertising that we're doing right now. Um, we've been, we have, we haven't stopped. Um, we haven't stopped marketing through all of this, even when we were completely shut down. Um, because we just, we recognized that there were some opportunities there to, to reach people that are serving other people. And, and so through June, we're going to, we're offering 20% off cleaning for all first responders. Um, we're offering, we're offering 20% off cleanings for all healthcare workers. And again, this is just another, another example of an ad targeted to healthcare workers. And I'm going to show you kind of like how we build some of our marketing out and how it's designed. So we, we do everything in kind of 90 day increments. So you're going to kind of see the behind the scenes of this a little bit. I'm going to expand this up a little bit. Um, so this is one from December. I'm not going to probably share my most current one because I've got some pretty fun ideas that I don't want you guys to steal before I do them. Um, but um, Basically, we, we, we always evaluate what worked, what worked last time, what our, what our top posts were, um, how many, how many you know, impressions did they get, how many people clicked on them, and, um, and really you know, how many of them turned into sales. And we use an agency, so we can actually track and really get some pretty deep, deep data on, um, you know, on, on some of that. And we can also give them our phone, all of our phone calls. They actually have access to our phone system. And they can see every call that came through and, and attribute that to a Facebook ad as well. So there's there's a pretty deep dive you can get into. Uh, we're always looking at what our competitors are doing. Sorry, I don't. Hopefully, maybe some of you guys are on here that are competitors, but um, I don't see a lot of national brands doing a great job with marketing. I think the maids is probably um, probably the best, and then. Um, there's another franchise out of Boston area. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on their name. I think they do a pretty good job with some of their marketing, but made, made pro, made pro. So I think they're they're good to look to for inspiration. You know, I also suggest following me, following other companies that you like outside of our space. Um, I always tell my designers to not look too much to what our competitors are doing because 
I don't see a lot of originality in our in our industry. So I look for I look to other places oftentimes for for ideas. Um, but it's always good to kind of look through what your competitors are doing. Um, you know, have some keywords that that you really want in your in your messaging. So think that through. Um, those are all things that that we always think through pretty regularly as far as what do we want to say um, in our messaging, what do we want to get out there. So that's what we wanted to do six months ago. Obviously, this has changed. Uh, so who are we targeting, right? So website visitors, those are everyone that's visited us in the last, uh, I would think that's a two month, that's probably a two month sample sex. We get about 2000 visitors a month. Uh, phone calls, so we're, we can target everyone that's called us as well through uh, our agency, they can, they can match that to people. Um, any emails that we, that we upload, so really our most current leads we, we put back through. We don't like to put our full list through because some of those are, are pretty old. Um, engaged users, people that have, that have recently clicked on, on an ad, and then our Facebook fans. Those are some of the audiences that we have as our, pri we call these primary audiences um, because these are people that are you know, engaged with our brand. Um, and then we do secondary audiences. These are things you create with Facebook targeting. Um, the reason you do a secondary audience is you can reach more people. Those were only, you know, probably 20,000 people in that other list. Um, so potential reach 360,000 people with our home homeowner lookalike. So based on, um, you know, um, top 1% of spenders, uh, location living in the United States within 25 miles of our location, in excluding Illinois with an age range, pretty broad. And then we do a parent lookalike or a parent audience of just parents in, in our in our region uh, where we do some kind of targeted ads towards parents. Um, so, you know, we aren't going to be able to reach all these people with our budget. So oftentimes you want to probably narrow that down a little bit. 360,000 in this month, that's a little high. I think we've narrowed it down quite a bit since then. And, you know, again, we have usually several different campaigns going. So there's one, two, three, four campaigns going. So we're usually targeting four different four different things at a time and testing different ads. So drop leads are people that have been to our website that went to our booking page, but then did not book. So we can specifically target people that almost got to the finish line and, and then didn't book for whatever reason. So uh, we, we retarget them this month on our satisfaction guarantee and then some more information on our service, trying both those things. Um, so basically they just, they went to our website, they hit the booking page, but they just did not hit the, they did not hit the thank you page. Okay. So, um, this is what the copy says. I, this is, must've been before we finalized it with images. Um, so this would be kind of an example of an image we'd use and, uh, then the other the other thing we did was we sent them a or we, we were uh, targeting them with a video as our other as our other target. So I'm just going to kind of roll through this a little quicker, um, you know, because we do this for uh, all different kinds of all different kinds of leads. So um, just we and we really structure it so we know where are we sending them to, what page on our website. Um, so in this particular instance, we sent them to the what's included page of our website. Uh, we thought that would be better than sending the homepage so they could dive a little deeper into, you know, what are they getting? Um, we had a promotion on fall cleaning. So, you know, that was again, kind of the same process. You kind of, you kind of work through, um, you kind of work through all these questions and build the content out based on those things. So where are we going to send them to? So this one we just sent to the homepage. Um, we did a gift card special. Uh, right now, and just this is something that that really surprised me. We sold almost. I'm not going to just throw a number out there. Somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars of gift cards over um, this last few months, mostly through email, but also we were we were doing some things over Facebook as well. Um, so we did. This doesn't look like the final copy. Um, but this would be the gift card. This would be what we did. We always do this as a holiday gift card special. Um, and I don't think Facebook is what really drives it. Mostly it's going to be, um, what it's going to be, uh, driving it is our email list. Um, looks like we didn't put the final webpage there, but we sent it to our gift, gift card cafe or our, 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 uh, 
gift card cafe is who we sell gift cards through. And then dynamic content is kind of a cool thing in Facebook. You can do this um, where you can actually create up to five different ads. Um, so this is the copy that it would be. So like, um, you know, five different like copies that you can create. I really like throwing these emojis into Facebook ads. I think that those really, you know, catch people's eye. And what's cool is um, you can have five different call to actions and five different buttons and just test, just test things out. And then these are the images and you would, and it rotates through. So if you want to just kind of quickly test some ideas out, uh, you can create an ad called dynamic content with Facebook and uh, it'll allow you to, to try a bunch of different ads out really, really quickly. So those are kind of some, those are kind of some, that's kind of our method for how we build out our content for like a 90 day period. And I think now, again, I don't know, we all are probably, you know, busier than ever. There was a time that we were sitting down and I was feeling like I had all this time on my hands. Um, but now all of us, all of a sudden that's changed. Uh, last thing I wanted to show is just this next door. Um, I feel like next door is, um, is got a pretty good platform. Um, let me see if I've, if I've had any action on this ad, not really yet. So I just put this out, uh, yesterday. Um, I think it cost me like 200 bucks, um, to run this ad that can reach up to a hundred thousand people for, uh, for 30 days. So, you know, anyone that gets on in the next 30 days, this, this ad will rotate through. And, um, you know, all we did was I'll show you the deal we did. We just created a local deal and pretty simple. We just, uh, let's see if it'll let me click into it. So you just add an image, you 10% off whole house, deep clean, you add some copy. Um, I also put in, I also made sure that I put in there um, a link to the precautions we have for COVID-19. I think in everything you do right now for your marketing, you do need to address that. It's, it's, um, what do you guys think? Tom, Liz, I mean, are you guys, are you guys, you know, making sure to put that in emails and things like that that you're putting out every time? We are here in Olympia. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's it's in every email reminder I send out. It's in every text that we send out to our customers that there's a cleaning coming up. Um, I like this link shortener Bitly because I can track uh, clicks and things like that. So I can create different instances of the same link. So I could actually put this link in a new link shortener and I can track every place that it's ever been clicked through from. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and if you, they have a paid version that's like $300 a year where you could create custom URLs. I don't know if I would go that far. I've thought about it, but uh, my the initials of my brand don't really lend well to that because of a of a movement that happened uh, a few years back. So it doesn't it doesn't work well for my brand anymore. But um, for you know, depending on your brand, then like shortening it to three letters could work really well. Um, and that's a really you know a nice branded piece to have a uh, a shortened URL. Although the LY URL, I don't know if any of you guys know this, what country, what country code that is for uh, URLs. Anybody know? Not me. Anybody on the chat know? I mean, maybe there's uh, somebody, somebody out there. It's it's Syria actually. So it's uh, not the most secure. It's kind of it's you know I wouldn't build a whole website based on the LY. I feel worried for Bitly in general that uh, that that's kind of built on a on a shaky foundation of, of, uh, you know, of a URL. So they, so Syria's government somehow controls that whole process of buying these URLs, but Bitly somehow has the ability to, to buy them and give you a shortened URL. If you, a, a branded one, if you wanted it for whatever reason, it's about $300 a year. Uh, I, I don't, I don't do it. I don't know that you need to do it. The basic features of it are great. Google has a shortener too. I, I like it because again, if you look at the whole URL of go to my blog and look at the whole URL of that website of this page, um, it becomes pretty long and takes up a lot of characters. So if you're using, you know, text or things like that, it's not easy. And obviously being able to go to bit.ly and check and see what links have been clicked for, you know, for a unique link that you've created. That's all, that's all pretty, pretty cool that you can do that. So, um, 
that's all I really have for basics of sharing. I know I went through a lot pretty quick, but then we could dive in if people have questions. It works out, Matt, because we do have a few questions here. All right. uh, the first thing somebody wants to know is, what is your connection to the Better Life Made product? The Better Life Made? Yeah, so um, Tim, uh, Tim was a friend, uh, one of the founders of Better Life. And um, so we originally were uh, Go Green Clean was our name, very original. And uh, so we started out in 2008 as Go Green Clean. And uh, when they kind of came out with the products about the same time, we were using them and we really liked them. Um, I wanted to uh, co-brand with them and it actually really worked really well for them because we – we actually gave them a lot of footprint in the St. Louis region before they were big, before they were, you know, before they were at all even sold in grocery stores. They had cars rolling around with Better Life Maids branding. We were dropping dish soap off at our customer's house um, with, with branding on it. Uh, we were selling product through, we were actually one of their bigger, biggest sellers before they got on with Whole Foods because we were selling direct to our customers at one point. Um, and you know that that was the relationship though. So we co-branded with them um, to to kind of create. My goal was at one point to sell franchises, and I sold about five. And I realized that that's a whole other business I didn't love. So long story short, uh, they were friends of ours, and we were able to work out uh, an agreement to work with them on that. Cool. And the next question is about your website. Um, and Katarina is saying it's great to have such a beautiful website. But a good website is no of no value if you don't have um, good SEO. So she's asking if you have any suggestions about um, SEO experts or what do you got? I think most SEO experts are are probably not worth the money you pay them. Um, there are some good ones, and I hate I hate to. You know, and the ones that are good enough to pay them are probably very expensive. So there's a guy here in town in St. Louis. Um, I mean, he won't even touch your website for less than 2000 a month. And I would trust him to do it, but I don't even really want to spend that kind of money on it. What I suggest is what's going to make your website rank is, is local reviews. And, you know, the stuff that they're doing is they're building links. They're building relationships with other websites, which are votes, which you can do yourself. There, there are... There are some tools out there. Um, Tom, I used to recommend one, I, and, and me and Derek both did. Do you remember the link, the, the, the SEO tool that we used to, to, to recommend? Maybe Derek will remind us. He's are you uh, talking about Moz? No. Yeah, that's what you use, though, Tom. We've used it for many years, Moz Local. And so Moz is, good for, Moz is good for building out your directory links, and that's important, too. So I, I definitely think... Um, I definitely think that's a huge first step that most people never take. You've got yeah. Moz local and you've got like the Moz for your, your national, which will help you with, you know. So, so yeah. for some amount of money, I think between 20 and $50 a month, there's different things with Moz local. That's a good point though. I think we can't forget that point. Um, Moz local will build out all your directories and, um, and directories are just things like, like Yelp or like the yellow pages or, but there's literally hundreds and hundreds of them. So there's a bunch of first tier ones that you want to be on. And it can be very hard to build all those yourself. At one point before all these directories were, were out, I, I built hundreds and hundreds of these. I found lists of like all the places to do this. And, you know, I was, I had a, I was an airline pilot at the time. So I'd be at my hotel room and I would get online and I would just do this work. And, um, yeah, I mean, you can shoot up the rankings pretty quickly by just doing some basic stuff, right? Um, you know, getting reviews with Google Local um, can really move you up in the local rankings. And especially when people are searching close to you, what I think people really need to realize now is so much of your Google rankings are just based on where somebody searches. If somebody searches more than five miles away from my office, the rankings are vastly different. Even though we, like, have I think we have like 168 Google reviews more though more than anybody else in town. Um, if if somebody's searching out in Kirkwood, which is exactly five miles away, uh, we're not going to show up first, no matter what we do. Not in the map pack. We probably show up maybe a couple times in the organic, and that's why you still probably have to do some advertising as well. 
we do the Google, uh, what is it called, Tom? Google local. It's uh, I think it's just Google local. It's just their uh, their paid service. Um, oh, Google guarantee. Yeah. Uh, Google guarantee. I mean, not AdWords. I do. I do AdWords. I have my AdWords turned off right now because. Um, I just was conscious of the spend there for a little bit. I wanted to be doing more Facebook. I, I like, I, I mean, I, I spend about, I spend about $2,000 a month, every month on Facebook ads, even during the, during the shutdown, not including my, not including my agency spend, you know, for designers and to create, you know, create fresh content and stuff like that. And then for people to manage it. And, uh, you know, so there's more money involved in that, but, um, if, if you can't spend that kind of money, there are smaller operations that will do this for you. I, you know, there is a lot, there's a lot to do it right. You know, you can do it with uh, some of the basic tools that Facebook provides. And I don't, I don't discourage that. I think just even just doing boosted posts is a good start. You can actually do some, some okay targeting with that. Uh, there's another level of targeting you can get into if you get into the, get into the Facebook manager and really manage your ads a little bit more deeply, um, but I think something is better than nothing with that. And getting out in front of getting out in front of people um, relatively cheaply, and uh, and and honestly, ad spend on on Facebook is actually so. Even though there's what's kind of weird about Facebook is it's based on impressions, right? So it's based on how many times they show your ad to different people. There are people that I have not seen on Facebook for like ten years that have been popping up on Facebook like. I had a bunch of friends just like that, I, that were never on Facebook finally joined. And I think people are, you know, this time of like, you know, of slowdown and just like, you know, connecting digitally. Some people that have just said, you know, I don't need this have decided that they're going to get on. So anyway, the impressions, the available impressions are way up. So the cost per ad is actually down quite a bit. Um, I want to say about 20% or so. It's, it's, it's a little bit cheaper than it normally is. And it's always, it's always cheap. People always ask me like, well, what about radio? What about TV? I'm like, I would be happy to do that if I exhausted every penny that I could possibly spend on Facebook and on other on other digital platforms, um, either AdWords or YouTube. If I spent every dollar with with digital spend first, and I couldn't reach any more people, then I would go to places like television and radio. And honestly, I want I want a younger demographic anyway. My company, my my customer does lean a little bit. Uh, a little younger with, uh, you know, they being tech savvy, being able to book online, uh, doing some of those things. And if, if your demographic is a little older, maybe radio is, you know, a good thing. We do some Mother's Day advertising and we do, um, we do something called Home for the Holidays that's on the radio where we give a, give a, a, a family some free cleanings and a, a, a military family that's, that's home for the holidays, a free cleaning. And then a bunch of other businesses chip in and they give, uh, Sometimes a car, if a dealership, you know, chips in. Sometimes, uh, anyway, it's just it's you know it's kind of cool to be part of this big thing. And uh, the radio, the radio station still makes us pay for the advertising, even though we're giving all this stuff away. But uh, it's that you know that one's just kind of a goodwill piece. Um, but it's not particularly expensive. But but I still think I still think Facebook is still the cheapest way to reach people, and obviously um, it includes Instagram as well. And um, it also has one other thing that people don't really remember, no, don't really realize about Facebook is, is that Facebook has a huge ad network off platform. So um, a lot of the ads you see on like um, Better Homes and Gardens, like for example, which might be a good, you know, tie-in for someone that's for for our demographic of, that's looking for a house, or maybe an architecture website. There's you know there's all the ads that are built into those websites. Those are either delivered by Google or Facebook, and oftentimes both. Um, and they're competing for different slots on their site. The, these sites have like an algorithm that's basically selling these spots, you know, um, and usually they actually are selling to both ad networks. So um, I have chosen to use Facebook's ad network versus Google's just because I don't want to be competing against myself to be selling ads either. Like if I'm selling on, I'm trying to buy ad space, you know, on websites with Google and, and I'm targeting people that have been to my website, not just random people. I only do, I only do remarketing uh, with those kind of ads where I'm where I'm going to people that that I already have a relationship with that have visited my site, and we all get those ads where we looked at a pair of shoes and then that pair, that pair of shoes keeps showing up. I try and have them go to a page that they've. That why they've don't Why don't we take remarketing from the from the top? Just back up a little bit because that's kind of an advanced concept. Okay. 
All right. So um, remarketing is the idea that every time you visit a website, there's a tiny little piece of code that, that gets placed on their computer called a cookie. And that's why, you know, um, some ad blocking software and stuff like that has, has been built. But the truth is 98% of consumers don't use any of that stuff. And it's, uh, you know, if, you know, it's still readily available. If you're going to use that technology, you probably need to talk to an expert to put some a disclaimer on your website that you use that technology. And that's why you see those disclaimers on most websites as a pop-up. But America, the United States does not require that. It just needs to be in the privacy policy of your website that you're doing this. So just to be clear, there are some things you would want to do if you're going to do it to be in compliance. Um, so when they go to your website, now they have a little tiny pixel or code that's on their computer. So Google or Facebook or whoever knows relatively who that person is, basically. And so when they go to Facebook now, they are able to, on the right-hand side or in their feed, um, see ads that are delivered, targeted to them based on their web searching history. So um, if they, and especially the more recent web history is going to be displayed in ads for them. So if they're looking at um, whatever their hobbies are, right? So if they're into, you know, scrapbooking, they're going to see scrapbook ads from this website that they visited last. Or, you know, in our case, hopefully a Better Life Maids ad that's targeted and catches them at the right moment. And they're like, oh yeah, I forgot. I was searching for them yesterday. I should click on that ad again and go back and, you know, get that book. Because a lot of times, you know, one of my pet peeves is salespeople that don't have tenacity. It is like, man, like I... Like sometimes I just need to be reminded to like buy your product. I wanted to buy it. I was like right there, but I just got busy and forgot. And like, um, you know, if you would have just had one or two more follow-ups of some kind, I would have bought from you. And so this is kind of automating that process, right? So they keep seeing your ads um, and, and you're you know, being a little tenacious. You're being out there and you're, you know, some people don't love it. Um, it's part of the, it's part of the, the advertising process. Uh, Part of the advertising landscape now, and I think it's I think it's just something you would want to look at if you want to reach people, especially if you're getting any kind of traffic to your site. You want to re-engage those people because um, <coughs> what percentage buy the first time that they visit your site, right? Like um, it's it's pretty low. So if you look at the people that are doing like online bookings and like that's their big thing like 1% of visitors would be a good conversion rate for a lot of those companies. Like if they had a hundred visitors, if one of them booked that day, sometimes they would say that's, that's a good conversion strategy. I've heard people say three, four, 5% for online booking. I've looked at a lot of people's analytics. I've never seen it that high. If, if there's anyone on the call that's doing that, I want to see what you're doing because that would make me happy. Um, I want to know what you're doing and please share. And I will, I will share lots of ideas with you. If you have 5% conversion rate with your online booking, we need we need to talk, um, but I hear people talk. We we do have some more questions too, too Matt. Um, so a couple of quick questions is: Do you manage all of this stuff yourself, like your your website, next door, uh, your Facebook marketing? How how much of it do you manage? How much do you farm out? How do you do that? So I manage it all in the sense that I'm deeply aware of what we're doing but I couldn't possibly do all of this stuff anymore. Like, so like the website I have, I have, there's two people that work on the website. There's both a designer and there is a coder, right? So um, those are two different jobs. So, you know, oftentimes I, I, I think that we, we have to remember like there's different roles that, you know, that we can, we can only know so much stuff. So like just to do good advertising, there's copy, right? I'm actually a really good writer when I actually peel away all the things that I say and just get to the point sometimes. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I oftentimes write things down and then I just delete whole paragraphs of what I'm saying. And then it's like, that was, it was just this one thing, but it was good. And um, so, you know, copywriting, right? That's one skill. Graphic design, it's a whole other skill. Um, you know, the analytics, I am good at that. So I do look at all my data and my numbers, my conversions. Um, that's another skill. Um, another skill would be, you know, photography. Um, another skill would be videography. There's no way you can do this stuff all yourself. I do think you need to have a trusted team of people um, that, that you're doing this with, or, or you know, a small up and coming agency would be uh, would be a good would be a good resource to 
to, to really look into. Um, you know, me and Tom have joked like that I should start an agency. I, I've, th- I've thought about it a long time. Um, it's just, you know, right now I really want to focus on growing my business and doing that, but I would love to be able to help more people with this stuff. It, it's just a matter of you got to orchestrate all those pieces together and, and really, and really do that. So it is really hard as an individual to do it all yourself. There are some basics you can do. Go ahead, Liz. All right. So if um, so, you're a big company, Matt, and a lot of the people that are on these Facebook lives, they're they're smaller companies right now. They're stressed out. You know, the coronavirus pandemic, they're hearing from you, somebody they trust that they need to like do this new branding thing, but they can't do it all themselves. Wow. What, what do you recommend? Where do they start? How do they how do they do what's right for them if they have a hundred thousand dollar company? Or a fifty thousand dollars. I mean, it just depends on what your investment level is in 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 that stuff and what's right. So it's not necessarily like what your revenue is, but it, you know, um, yes, that's a good that's a good question because you can't you can't do all this stuff yourself. But then it does get expensive to farm it all out. Um, you know, the numbers that I might throw out might be vastly different than than what you'd be able to do. Um, what I would suggest is um, what I would suggest is. There are some low cost ways to get started that are not going to necessarily be perfect, but they're going to be good. You can use tools like Canva to kind of do your own design, um, to do your own graphic design. You don't need to know. So I know how to use Photoshop and Illustrator and some other tools. Um, I take a lot of pride in, in the learning that I did. And if you wanted to use those tools, there's there's uh, some websites that offer some courses. Um, I want to say there's one called Martha.com. If that might, maybe if somebody looks that up. Uh, and see if that's still around. I think it was called Martha, like 10 years ago, it was called Martha.com. It could have changed names since then. Uh, kind of a terrible name for a website, but it was awesome because it had all this learning on Photoshop and Illustrator. And I, know, so I, I know Adobe too, as part of the whole COVID-19 thing, had a lot of their uh, training that normally they, they charge for, they were giving it away. Yeah, so, so I took the time, I did take the time to learn it, and you certainly could. So you can trade time or you can trade money. But Canva is a good tool that you could just get started with. Um, I know there's a lot of people that do some really creative stuff with Canva. It's not going to look like it's from, from some Fortune 500 company, but it's going to look good. Uh, that's not the point. Again, the branding is not necessarily to make you look like you're the slickest company in the world. The branding is about, again, creating trust and creating and creating an image that is professional. So if you can be consistent and it doesn't look like it rolled out, rolled out of like, you know, um, well, let me give you an example. I was just about to say it rolled out like on a piece of newspaper. Um, one of my plumber friends had a really great point was, he's like, Matt, you make your stuff look like your business is really expensive. He's like, I want my, I want my customers to think that it like our website is a brown paper bag and that it's just like, you know, written in, in ink and like <laughs> it's just very basic because I don't want them to think we're the most expensive plumber. I want them to call us thinking they're going to get a deal. I'm like, well, dude, that's a good, that's a good analogy. I think that that's a good point too. So there is something to be, there is something to be said for if you are small, don't punch up too high because you, you can, you know, over present this image that you're this huge company and the expectations are out of line. I think, I think presenting the image that you're a small mom and pop company, but you're doing things the right way. Man, I think that's super powerful. That's a that's a great brand. Some of you guys that have names like, you know, Mom Maids and you know things like that, or like those are those are strong brands about trust. Like and and focus on it. Like who would you rather have clean your home than another mom, right? Like who's gonna like? I mean, whatever the whatever your company is, whoever you are, that's your brand, and that's and that's what you focus on. It's not like trying to be the slickest or have the best advertising. Use what you have. Find some basic tools. Oh, the other, but I was going to say we're sharing tools. Canva, um, there are, I haven't used them in a long time, but I have used with some success. Uh, there's some like logo design contests. And then you can even go to um, Upwork is more for if you're going to have like a website built. Upwork is good. Uh, you can look for a graphic designer. Uh, or Fiverr is hit or miss. Sometimes you can find some great people on Fiverr though if you um, anybody had any good success in the, in the comments of Fiverr? I have, I have not, but I have I know people that have, though. I do. 99 Designs might be the logo design. 99 Designs is good. Yeah, that's a good that's a good place to look. I was going to say, I did have one good thing from, um, from uh, Fiverr. I had somebody record uh, a while back our uh, 
our um, phone system like on from Fiverr, and they only they only were like it was like five dollars per recording, and it was pretty good, and we spent like twenty bucks. And uh, it sounded better than me. And I was just like, that's oh, perfect. Like, you know, so um, I, you, you can sometimes get lucky with Fiverr and find some good people. So Fiverr is a good, a good resource. Um, oh, there is a great resource uh, for copy and for creating ads for Facebook. Um, I will try and remember it before the end of the ad. I, I Before the end of this. Okay. You keep thinking of that, and I'm going to throw out these all in a row for everybody. These are the things that Matt has already commented on. Canva, Upwork, Fiverr, 99designs, and Moz, M-O-Z. So these are all tools to help you with your marketing and branding. Um, and Moz, Moz Local would be my particular. Yeah. Moz, Moz Local is free. I mean, you can pay the paid version, but... They'll give you a lot of information about what directories you're in and you don't have to pay anything for that. And it gives you a lot of tasks to do, which make you um, feel, and it actually does work, some stuff that you can do. We also have a couple of questions here too. Um, Matt, do you have a, a preference or anybody that you're recommending for managing Facebook, for your Facebook ads or all of that? Do you have anybody? <sighs> Nobody right now. Sorry, Lily. All right. Um, how about do you have any information about where people can go, who they might use to um, they want to get um, like an instant price quote on their website, like a book it now form or something like there's that? A few, there's a few tools. So uh, in full disclosure, I use Tom's product made central that has that has that built in. Um, I don't recommend that for every company. I think that that is a great software, but I think you need, some level of growth in your company to make that investment a, a worthwhile investment. Um, so Tom, sorry, I think, you know, I think you'd agree with that. I agree. I agree. It's, okay. um, um, so, so I think there's a couple options if you're just getting like for smaller companies, Responsibid is awesome. I think, um, that's a great tool. Responsibid would be a great tool for putting on some online pricing on your website. Uh, launch 27. I know a lot of you guys manage your companies with launch 27. Launch 27 is also uh, software. Uh, I know a Mars company, um, Zenmade, has, has um, a, a online booking tool. Um, there, there's a couple others. There's, uh, man, there's one that's fairly new. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but it would be, oh, gosh, I wish, I wish I could just pull that out. But there's several out there, and I, I think we can talk more about, you know, booking engines and things like that to run your company with. But if you just want one, if you already have a good back end or you're already using, you know, scheduling software and stuff like that, Responsibid is quite good and very easy to use. And Kurt Kemper is uh, kind of a fun, Kempton. smart guy. What, Kempton? Kempton. Kempton. Smart, yeah. funny guy. And he puts out some, like, really funny blogs. It's very helpful with uh, – I read his blog, too. I think he's, he's quite funny. Um, I've been out to dinner with him and just, like – just dying the whole time talking about parenting and his style of parenting. And, and it's funny because it's all about business, but he's like tying it into he's, his brand is just, uh, you talk about brand is just like uh, just goofball, funny guy, but super smart. And, and again, his product is good and simple to use. And I know, um, I know that that would be a good place to begin if you don't want to switch softwares for everything else. It's, it has some CRM functions too, as far as drip marketing and, um, we're we're kind of getting in the weeds the end here, but uh, Bridget's asked if we could post like the links to all of those resources that you just mentioned. Now, that's a bunch of links. What we can do, sure. Matt, you would maybe if you could put together like a document, which is kind of your toolbox. Sure. I could put make that a download off a of cleaning business today, and they can. Yeah. I'll make that a link, and we can download and get all of that on one list. I can do that. There's a few things we've talked about today we can put on there. Um, if Liz has some notes, we can just yeah. she, she's a good note taker. Just shoot me over her notes and a picture from the from the call, and I'll try and write something up. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question. We talked a lot about tools, and just a, a a short answer here. Website obviously is important in applying those tools to to, to kind of build up your website and, and make it relevant. But what do you think about 
you know, a lot of times like a, a Facebook page or your Google business listing maybe is, is overlooked in this whole process. How important are they in, in the digital marketing space? I'll tell you what, my Google Places, I'd have to pull up the stats on it, but my, my Google Places page gets almost as much traffic as my website. I mean, it's probably, I would not overlook that. I would not overlook, you know, putting some posts on there, um, putting your specials on there. You're reminding me, I haven't done one in, a, in about a month. Um, I actually think our Google, the, the Google Local, the Google Places page is actually more important than our website sometimes. Our Facebook page is important and, and obviously um, is, is obviously very important too. But I think you can really actually have some pretty good results with uh, with making that as good as possible with some great. Context of being a small business with a limited budget and limited resources, you know, I think a lot of times we spend too much time worrying about our website and missing yeah. the hanging fruit. You don't need a developer. You yeah. just take your your phone and take some pictures and upload it. You can. You could, you could build a cheap website on Wix with just, I mean, honestly, all your website really needs to be is if a caveman looked at your website, would he be able to immediately know what you do in like 30 seconds, three seconds, right? If a caveman looks at your website and he just grunts, cleaning company, that's all he needs to be able to do, right? If you make it much more complicated than that, then it does, you, you need to have good, you know, good messaging. But if you, but again, a cleaning company they can trust and why? Again, it, it could just be a one page or two page or five page website. It, like my website has 300 pages and there's a reason for it because each one of those pages is going after some long tail keywords, but to start with. Okay. But your main word is trust right make, now. Make, make note, we're like 51 minutes in. So we're gonna go back and snip that cleaning company caveman and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put that to use in the That's going everywhere. Go <laughs> in. I love it. But Matt, if you, if somebody had to like have this overarching idea right now, what you're suggesting is, come on, let's get everybody focused on trust. You yeah. want your customers to trust you right now. Safety, health, yeah, all of that good stuff, right? Well, I mean, I mean, when this was all going on, I, I, like, I had a call. Me and Tom were doing a call, and uh, we, we talk a lot about business ideas, and you know, share a lot of ideas. And so you guys are kind of getting in behind the scenes of like some of the calls we do probably once a week, we're doing strategy calls for our businesses and it's kind of an informal thing. Sometimes uh, there's other people on the call and, and whatnot, but it, one of the calls I was like, man, Tom, I was like, you did it in such a nerdy way, like 10 years ago, but you were like, you were like predicting the coronavirus with your branding. And it's yeah. like, I was like, man, I'm going to rebrand to castle keepers. I think I need I think oh, I need to add. <laughs> well, I want to I want to add to the trust idea. In order to do it effectively, you have to be thinking about how do I become trustworthy. Trust doesn't just happen. You have to create a business that is trustworthy, and through that, you get the trust. So, what are some of the things oh, that we're, what are the th some oh. of the things you're doing? So really, Tom, I mean, now is the time that you need to start popping up links because really I, I, we didn't plan this like this, although it's going to look like we did. But bottom line is that's the whole point of the courses that we are creating is because we want everybody that is. I, uh, it looks like we planned it, but we didn't. It's just that all the time that we're never that 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 talented to. Uh, yeah, it, it would be awesome if we were as talented as we appear sometimes. But um, so this whole idea of trust that Matt's been talking about this the, this entire call, and you've heard it if you think about it now, you're like, oh, wow, they have been talking about this the whole time. We're trying to professionalize the industry because we want everyone to trust us and feel like it's the good, safe, healthy, hygienic option to have us in the home. Here are some more things to go on your website, y'all. So go ahead, Tom. Give us the give us the information. Two classes, uh, two programs. The COVID nineteen program is a three hour class designed for cleaning professionals who are cleaning in a COVID nineteen world. It is just specifically the information uh, that a, that a cleaning professional would need to be responsible and do the right things in the COVID nineteen world. 
talking about you know the right PPE and how to use it, what disinfectants are, and how to sanitize high touch surfaces, bed linens. It, it's it's an awesome course, and anybody who's out there cleaning right now should take it. Again, it's designed for cleaning professionals, but the program that we're in the midst of launching is the PHC class, professional house cleaning class. Um, that's seven. It's a program, actually. It's a seven class program. Uh, the second class just went live today. The first class went live last week. There's five more classes are going to be coming out between now and the end of May. At the end of the program, at the end of you know the seventh class, there's a, there's an exam. You complete it. You get a certificate of of, of completion. Um, and again, this is designed for house cleaning professionals. So folks are cleaning homes every day. A much broader course than just the specific COVID nineteen material. Um, and it's 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 non prescriptive. It's for 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 any cleaning company, regardless of business model or what products or tools you use but it's like the foundation that any cleaning professional really needs to have. And you go to Modern Cleaning and you can click on either one of the links on the homepage that will take you to the COVID class or the PHC and you can go down here and click and register. And um, they're awesome courses. And that's part of building trust because you wanna be able to tell your clients and your prospective clients that you're providing training, your people are professionally trained, they know what they're doing and be able to demonstrate that it's easy. And that's where things are going. There was a time and it wasn't that long ago that people could just make claims and get away with it. And customers weren't even asking questions. They said it's on the internet, it must be true. I think moving forward, people are gonna be a little more leery, a little more weary, a little more concerned about health and, and, and keeping their home safe. And they're going to be looking for evidence that the claims that are being made are, are real. And this is, this is an important way of doing that. And one more thing about this, the, these programs is the programs are created for you, the business owner, but they're directed toward the professional house cleaners, meaning that they're, um, directly developed so that your professional house keeper, keepers can engage with them and um, gather the information and feel confident and like they want to do the things that are that are in these programs but we're doing it for you we're doing it because we know that this is what you're going to need to be able to be competitive in this new market this isn't going away anytime soon. It's not going to be a world where the smiling faces are going to win out over the, the, the factual, not factual, what's the word I'm looking for? The educated company. The educated company is going to win in this new market. I, dumped up, I, I dropped the links to both the COVID class and the PHC class and, and the uh, chat. While we were here, I was also able to find the link to the SBA guidance on the rules for PPP. We can talk about this tomorrow, but I'll go ahead and drop that in the uh, share as well. So um, everybody can get a get a jump on reading it. It looks like it's like yeah, it's like 48 questions. It goes on for like 16 pages. It's a PDF download. All right, that's great. Thanks for finding that for us, Tom. Um, I know we are um, up. With, oh, look at that. We have a whole two minutes here. Yeah. Matt, I did make a note for you of all the resources I'll, that you mentioned today, um, and I'll send them over to you so you can create that thing. Oh, I'm glad everybody was appreciating the info today. A little bit different information, but it's time to, we got to be moving forward too, right? We got to, what are, what are your steps? What are your next steps? What are the actions that you're taking to make you successful in this new environment? And these are some of the things you have to be focusing on. Not just worried about how you're going to, how you're going to spend your money or did the money drop in the bank yet? Not just that. Definitely keep thinking about that, especially if you haven't, but we got to move past that as well. There's, there's uh, there's 143 billion left in PPP if you have not applied yet. So, I would, I would say that it's going to disappear quick. But it, it, you know, it didn't go as quick as the first round because I do think some of the big companies that took advantage the first time through really ate through it quicker. And I do think if you haven't applied yet, you haven't gotten your paperwork together, 
there's still an opportunity to do so. So I would I would get that done though in the next couple couple of days if you can. Not too much longer. Okay. Yeah. Hours is better. Days is second. And then no longer than a week, y'all. Yeah. We're running out of time yeah. now. And it's, okay, we have time for one last question, maybe. Anybody have one last question? Yeah, but we said two minutes. We said two minutes. Daylight's we've been going up. What do you got, Liz? We, we got nothing. So we got all the questions. Oh, wait, there was one more question. Matt, do you have any information about Home Advisor or Google Ads? Preference? Which one's better? How? I, I, I can only talk for a minute and a half. We use the Google Guaranteed Ads and we like them. Um, I have Home Advisor used to be something else in the past. We are not currently using them. Um, I'm not saying that they're good or bad. I just didn't have great experience with it in the past because you're fighting, you're fighting for three other companies for for leads. And I always found that the Home Advisor leads or whatever it was called in the past were um, oftentimes very very price conscious and not not looking out for my brand or what I was offering. They were looking at price as their primary buying decision. I think pretty much the consensus is Google guarantees a better value. I even think Yelp would be probably something to try right now and turn on their turn on their ads. I have not had a lot of success with it, but I mean, um, if you want something just easy to turn on, Yelp might be something to do. But uh, the the simplest thing I is, love Yelp. yeah, the simplest things are oftentimes are, are oftentimes good. Yelp is simple, and um, you can build out your page, put lots of pictures that you just took on your smartphone. Again, you don't need a fancy photographer to do you know some great pictures of your staff and. Um, you know, we didn't talk about this a lot, but photography, taking pictures is a great piece of marketing and using Instagram and then boosting some of those. Again, your, your biggest tools are oftentimes you carry something in your pocket with you every day as a phone, you know? So, that's it. We're out of time. Right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate yeah. you being here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern. Stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye